Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Wes, thanks for tuning in. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how we took our crawl space from what you see here into this awesome setup. Now, the benefits of having an encapsulated crawl space are cleaner air in your home. It's gonna keep moisture levels down in the crawl space, keep that soil gas from coming up if you have radon. And we do have a little bit of that here. I'm using a long-term tracker made by EcoCube, but that's how we were able to know that we even had radon in the house to begin with. I'll have a link for that in the description if that's something that you're interested in. In order to actually mitigate radon, you are gonna have to have some kind of a fan pulling out from underneath the plastic or venting out directly from the crawl space. But without further ado, we'll jump right into the steps that I took in order to get this crawl space properly encapsulated. So the first thing I did was to remove the subfloor insulation. You'll see here it's covered by a black plastic. And the problem with subfloor insulation is that it comes loose over time and it sags. It's a hiding place for rodents. It can hide mold. If you ever have a leak in your piping, it's going to be ruined anyways. So I figured I might as well go ahead and get that out and then have a clean space to start with. I'm also getting rid of this loose laid vapor barrier that's just kind of laid out here. It's not really doing much for moisture control. The columns aren't wrapped, it's not taped or sealed, anything like that, and it's super dirty. So we're going to get the insulation out and the old vapor barrier off the floor as step one. And we're catching a little bit of a snowstorm here in Asheville, uh, but we've got the insulation out and everything looks great. Uh, the good news was I didn't uncover any kind of major mold issues, no rodents or pests. Um, and also the other good thing is now you can see all of the wiring and plumbing. I found a couple of outlet boxes that I didn't even know I had and also found a PEX water pipe ran to the other end of the house that was hidden by the insulation for a water hose. And I started to roll back this existing vapor barrier, kind of doubling it back up on itself. And I was kind of surprised to find all the moisture on the bottom. So there's actually quite a bit more water coming up out of the ground than I realized. Uh, we don't have any standing water, but just moisture coming off of this clay dirt. Um, so we're going to get this out of here either way, um, but all the more reason to make sure we do a proper encapsulation and get that put back as soon as possible. I also uncovered a pretty uneven spot of soil here. I was thinking it might be from water intrusion, but we've had some heavy rains and no water came up in here. So this might have been from like an animal or something at some point. I'll keep an eye on it. But this is also a good time to remove any sort of concrete or rock debris. That way when your new vapor barrier goes down, there's no issues. Next, we're going to focus on getting all of our rim joist bays insulated. And what I've got here is some 2 inch thick R10 rigid foam board that I picked up from Home Depot. And unfortunately, it's not super cheap, but it is easy to work with. I've already got some of the pieces here cut into rectangles that we'll put into each of the bays. And all you really have to have to get this done is just a retractable knife that you can extend to cut through that two inch thickness, a pin, a tape measure, and then just some sort of a straight edge to lay on the foam board whenever you're making your lines for your final cuts. And what I used to get these sealed up was some of the great stuff, basic foam in a can that you can pick up at any hardware store. It's kind of hard to film and do it, but you get the gist. This is going to act as a air sealer and a glue for each of these foam panels. So you'll get them slipped up into place and just give them a firm push and make sure that they're seated all the way back against the rim joist. And the hardest part about this whole install is just the amount of rectangles that you're going to have to cut to make sure that you get each bay insulated. So every one of these has a rim joist bay and then on the other side it has the same thing. And then for the side of the house, this is the outer band. You'll be cutting longer sections here instead of smaller squares. I also used the 2 inch foam board insulation to seal off the foundation vents. And then I took some zip system tape to tape over that foam to make sure that it's as air sealed as possible. This tape stuck to the concrete really well. And as a further air sealing step, I went ahead and looked over here at the sill plate. And this is after it's already been sealed. But at the top of your block and where your sill plate meet, if you look at it just right, you can normally see some daylight through there, which means also air and bugs are going to be able to get through. So I took some caulking and went around this whole perimeter as well and then got this part completely sealed up just to make it that much more efficient. And since we've removed our floor insulation, we're going to come back and add perimeter insulation to the foundation walls. I was lucky enough to find this 2 inch thick foil faced insulation board on Facebook Marketplace. It was 4 feet by 5 feet. So it's perfect for my crawl space. It looks like I'm not going to have to actually come back and trim anything um, to make it fit because the crawl space is just a little over five feet tall. I highly recommend doing the foil face boards if you can find them because they kind of act as a vapor barrier on both sides. 
and you can see here I've already got a few of the panels installed with these plastic washers and the Tapcon screws and it actually went up really easy. Um, you do need to have some sort of a hammer drill to drill into the wall uh, but the Tapcon screws come with a 5 30 seconds bit so that was no problem. And my exact setup was a three and a quarter inch Tapcon with these plastic Spax washers that I picked up at Lowe's. And basically what it is is a concrete anchor screw and then the plastic cap has these cleats that'll push into the insulation. And then once everything's snugged up, it actually provides more holding power for it to stay against the wall. So now we have the rigid foam board insulation all around the perimeter of the crawl space. It actually went up pretty quick. I just had a few minor notches to make. Um, but that Tapcon and washer system worked great. Just put a couple on each board and then one at the bottom. And then we came back after that and did some Reflectix metal tape on all of the seams just to make sure that there's no water or moisture penetrations coming between the boards. And this stuff was super easy to use. Just peel the back of it off and then just push it right into place. It was so easy to use. I even took some of the extra tape that I had at the end and covered up all of these wall penetrations just to make sure that things were sealed up as I could possibly get them. So this next step is optional, but since we do have a little bit of radon here at this house, I took this four inch drain pipe and I actually ran it all the way around the perimeter of the crawl space and then made a T-joint. And I made sure to glue all of the joints with the proper purple primer and then the corresponding cement. And then here on the outside corner of the house where one of the foundation vents are, I've actually went ahead and made a hole. Uh, so we're going to pipe the radon fan right out this hole. And so we basically just took a small hole saw and cut through the foam board and the two inch rigid insulation that we had sealed off there. And we got a T here and the perimeter pipe that we're going to pipe right out that corner. So here it is with all the final plumbing. And I made sure to come back up here to the top and get that sealed up nice and tight. That way there's no air leaks uh, coming in or out. And it's important to note that all of the fittings and pipe after that T are Schedule 40 PVC. You want to make sure that you're using the heaviest duty PVC possible when you're installing a radon system. All of the perimeter pipe I've got here is like a Schedule 20 drain pipe. But since it's not actually going to be moved or anything, I was okay with doing that. And we've also got our low spot filled here with kitty litter. And this shot here in particular was just me testing the radon fan that we have hooked up to that perimeter system. And ultimately, the perimeter is going to be covered up by the vapor barrier. And then this fan is going to put pressure underneath that system to make sure we're pulling out any radon and getting it exhausted outside the home. But then I noticed the system wasn't pulling from the furthest point away from the fan as effectively. So I took a little bit of painter's tape and covered up some of the holes in the pipes that were closest to the fan. And that seems to help evenly distribute things. But now we're all set up and ready for the vapor barrier. And full disclosure, I did actually have another company come in to install the vapor barrier. That's something I just didn't really feel like doing myself. I didn't think I would do a good job, but you can see here that they killed it. Uh, I did order the vapor barrier from CrawlspaceNinja.com through their DIY store. Um, so this is the 12 mil no cat pee guarantee vapor barrier, and it looks great. I'm glad I did have a company come to install this. I don't think I could have done anywhere near as good of a job as what they did. And once the vapor barrier got installed, I checked the EcoCube radon levels and things had dropped considerably. Um, I was at like 0.2 picocuries, which is lower than outside. Um, so I'm very happy with that. And honestly, just very happy with the final outcome of this project. It looks like a lab down here now, it's super awesome. Now, there's plenty of other benefits to encapsulating your crawl space other than it just looking awesome. The number one benefit is it's going to reduce moisture levels in your crawl space and help to lower humidity. I may wind up having to add a dehumidifier in the future. This just got installed yesterday, so I'm gonna monitor those levels over time. I've got a couple of sensors down there that are sending data to my smartphone and they're keeping track of the temperature and the humidity. And I'll provide links for those in the description as well. But the second biggest benefit to having your crawl space encapsulated is just having cleaner air within your home. It's estimated that 90% of the air that you breathe within your home comes up from the crawl space. So the cleaner that you can keep that area and the drier that you can keep that area, um, the better your air is gonna be throughout your whole house. But in the meanwhile, I'd really like to thank you for tuning into the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll consider subscribing. Definitely click like, leave a comment below if you have any questions, and I hope to see you next time. All right, peace.